Mark Guy Pierce was a beloved Cornish Methodist preacher and devotional writer. I discovered some time ago a small book, a very tiny book actually, entitled Praise, Meditations in the 103rd Psalm. It's uh, over a hundred years old. It deals with one of my most favorite psalms. And I'm referring to the chapter that directs itself toward verse 4. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. I'll read a portion. Think what forgiveness may mean. To forgive is often pride's supremest triumph. To be forgiven may be the offender's bitterest humiliation. It may mean a foe trodden down and beaten. And at last, when the conquering might is magnified and the helplessness of the enemy is made patent to the world, then the conqueror stoops haughtily to forgive. Forgiveness, it may mean, and often does mean, that which is wrung from an unwilling heart, by great entreaty, tears, and hardships, or it is bought by bribes and bitter terms, and when most virtuous and most complete, forgiveness is held as a favor that might be, must be rightly asked for, and having given it, the giver counts that he has done all that generosity itself requires. This is forgiveness between equals, such as we are. It is good, it is wonderful to turn from this and to think how God forgiveth. He, King of kings and Lord of lords, it is amazing that he forgiveth at all. Forgiveness implies a certain eminence in the offender. Even our poor humanity can think of those who might be beneath one's forgiveness, to whom we cannot stoop to have such intercourse as even offense or forgiveness implies. Think then of him, the Most High God, whom we have wronged, we poor dependents on his bounty for life and breath and all things, he forgiveth, and forgiveth by himself stooping to all humiliation and tears and agony. He cometh himself to provide forgiveness and meets us with it, and himself entreats our acceptance of it at his hands. Amongst us let us hope there is no wrong which by God's grace we could not forgive, but it is easy to think of wrongs of which forgiveness should be conditional. Yes, I forgive, I forgive, but only if you keep out of my sight. Never let me see you again, or the sight will bring back all the bitter memory of my wrong, and kindle again the fire of my indignation and hatred. O oh, my soul, think again of what thy sin means to God. Think of all that it has cost him, what bitterness of anguish, the cross, and all the accursed death of Calvary. He forgiveth, yes, but what then? that I must go forth from the presence of the Lord, burdening him no more with memories of his shame and sorrow? No, forgiven only that he may set his love upon me and lift me up and honor me, honor me, that he may crown me with loving kindness and tender mercies. Beautiful and true are those words. A man's forgiveness may be true and sweet, but yet he stoops to give it. More complete is love that lays forgiveness at thy feet and pleads with thee to raise it. Only heaven means crowned, not vanquished, when it says forgiven. The very completeness and perfection of God's forgiveness this, he crowneth thee with loving kindness. Well may this twofold blessing move our praise, since it kindles the rapture and inspires the chorus of heaven itself, in that dazzling vision most splendid perhaps of all that human eyes ever looked upon, St. John sees him who sitteth upon the throne, the Lamb as it had been slain, and before him fall the circling ranks of those that are round about the king, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, and they sing a song that is forever new. Thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, and hast made us kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And so beginning the song goes forth with dwelling fullness, ever growing until it wakens all the voices of all worlds, and then sweeps back again a universal rapture of adoration. Every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. My soul, exercise thyself in these strains of celestial music, and with heart tuned by the finger of God, be always praising him. That which inspires heaven's music may well fill us with grateful adoration. Bless the Lord, O my soul. 
who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies.